Ogilvy's first big adventure after leaving Oxford was a job in one of France's greatest kitchens in the majestic hotel. In those kitchens, everything that left the kitchen to go out had to be perfect. The way the, the plate looked, the presentation, the taste, everything. And I think that is what made him a perfectionist. Ogilvy learned hard work, excellence, and discipline. And the head chef, Pitar, taught Ogilvy a style of management based on respect and fear. One time, Pitar was watching me decorate frog's legs, most exquisite work. It was an important day because the president of France was coming to dinner. Suddenly, Pitar, watching me, signaled for the other chefs to come over to my table. Son of a bitch, I thought. He's going to fire me, and he wants an audience. But I kept going, just. My knees were knocking together, and <clears throat> like castanets. And the whole brigade was gathered around. I was working away. Peter pointed to my work and said to the others, that is the way to do it. It was the proudest moment of my life. A few hours later, I saw the president of France eating my frog's legs. The following week, he died. A year later, the restless 21-year-old returned to Britain, forsaking Parisian elegance for a sales job in Scotland, hawking door-to-door -door a new product called the Arga Cooker. Another component of his creative philosophy came very much from his experience selling Aga cookers, uh, where he said, you know, no sale, no commission, no commission, no eat. <laughs> Here's a model of an Aga. It's the most expensive cooking stove in the world, and by far the best. It used to take me half an hour to make the sale. It's about 3,000 words. It was a lesson of humility, because you have to knock at the door of someone. And then you have to praise the product you're selling. And then he knew how to cook, so he showed what one could do with it. Ogilvy was a natural salesman, so successful that Arga asked him to write the sales manual. Fortune magazine said it is the best of its kind ever written. The longer you talk to a prospect, the better, and you will not do this if you are a bore. Pepper your talk with anecdotes and jokes. A deadly serious demonstration is bound to fail. If you cannot make a lady laugh, you certainly cannot make her buy. Writing his first ad for the Arga whetted Ogilvy's appetite for advertising. He paid people the highest compliment. Don't talk down to them. Don't pretend that, or, or even think you know any more than they do. I mean, that, that was what David Ogilvy was about. He could, he could talk to people in a language that they could understand. The consumer's not a moron. She's your wife. Don't insult her intelligence, and don't shock her. A lot of consumers are not as sophisticated as you are. With Scotland conquered, Ogilvy set his sights on America. In 1938, he began work at George Gallup's grandly named Audience Research Institute. Gallup turned polling into a science and was the first to apply its techniques to the world of advertising. Pounding the streets for Gallup made a lasting impression. He went door to door and he asked people their opinions and he asked them why they thought what they thought. And I think that too stayed with him because he never for a minute um, stopped thinking about what does the consumer think. 